What's up, drum channelers? How are you doing? Rich Redman here from the Jason Aldean Band. I'm here in beautiful Oxnard, California. I love this technology. People from all over the world can sign in on this live lesson. So we've had fun here today at the Drum Channel. Matter of fact, we shot a DVD today, a DVD multimedia package that goes along with a new book I'm working on called Fundamentals of Drumming for Kids. So hopefully we'll see that in the first quarter of next year. But for the next 30 to 60 minutes, I'm here for you. I know that you can write in your questions and I'll do my best to answer them. In the meantime, I thought we'd jump right in uh, using one of the greatest drum books of all time that most famous drummers have worked through, a book called Syncopation for the Modern Drummer, which is kind of a funny title because the book has been around forever. <laughs> Matter of fact, I have lessons. I have my original copy and it said September 1977 in it. So this is one of my favorite pages from the book. And I thought I would use the first two lines of the book as a springboard for creative ways that you can practice to work on not only your facility, but your coordination and your creativity on the drum set. So I think this page is available as a download so you can download that right now and follow along with me. So let's start at the very basics, counting. So if we were to count the first two lines of this uh, exercise or this page, it would go like this. One and, and three, four, one, two, and, and one, two, three, and, and one, and, and three, rest. One and, and three, and, and one, two, and, and four, and, and three, four, and, and three, and. Okay, so it's an eight bar phrase and there's so many things that we could do with this eight bar phrase. So counting is crucial, especially for you younger players. Um, let's get the sticks in our hands, and I'm going to play this, these first two lines using natural sticking, which means if I had an eighth note grid, one and two and three and four and, one and two and three and four and, the downbeats would be played by my right hand and the upbeats would be played by my left hand. So what I like to do is I like to think of the missing notes as like a ghost note, and in that spot I will either play the air or I will play an actual note. And I'll demonstrate that on the hi hat because it's a little softer and I could talk. But if this is our grid, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, then I will think of the missing note. I will almost play it in the air like this. One and, and three, four. One, two, and, and one, two, three, and, and one, and, and three. One and, and three, and, and one, two, and, and four, and, and three, four, and, and three. Okay, now, whatever we play straight, we can also swing. So if we're playing this a straight rhythm, one and two and three and four and, we can also swing it. And the swing rhythms are all based on triplets. So if we have zaka do ga ta ga da go do ga ta go one lali, two lali, three lali, four lali, these rhythms will fit into that grid and it'll feel like this. One and, and three, four, one, two, and, and one, two, three, and, and one, and, and three, four, one, and, and three, and, and one, two, and, and four, and, and three, four, and, and three, ah. So uh, I think I'm getting a request to write some of these rhythms on our dry erase board. So I'm gonna do that right now. Matter of fact, I am going to write the full eight bar phrase on our dry erase board. And I will write as neat as possible here after three cups of coffee. So <laughs> great coffee here at the Drum Channel. Bear with me here. Okay, almost there. You gotta learn to write fast in the drum biz. Especially in recording sessions, somebody will ask you to play something very specific and time is money in the studio and you gotta get things done. So this is our first two lines from the Ted Reed book. And this, believe it or not, is an eighth note, <laughs> that is an eighth note rest and my quarter note rest. If we put our counting up there, we have one and, and three, four, one, two, and, and one, two, three, and, and one, and, and three. Rest, one and, and three and, and one, two and, and four, and, and three, 
four, and, and three, and. So do you guys understand what I mean when I say and? All of your upbeats are counted as and. So if you have your eighth note grid, one and, two and, three and, four and. So if you just have your downbeats, those are quarter notes. One, two, three, four. If you have just your upbeats, it would look like this. One and, two and, three and, four and. And we were shooting our children's book DVD today and we had to be very careful about always counting. And here I am playing drums since 1977 and I'm still counting, whether out loud or silently, hopefully silently on a recording session. Okay, so we talked about, so you can follow along now. We talked about playing the missing notes as an air note. Now let's play an actual ghost note. And when I say ghost note, I mean that that stroke is played closer to the surface. So uh, the written rhythm will be full strokes and the ghosted note or the missing note will be played as a tap. And that's the basis of all drumming, our strokes and our taps. When you see, hear somebody play a rock groove, the hi-hat part, stroke tap, stroke tap, stroke tap, stroke tap, stroke tap, stroke tap. No different here when we're reading this out of syncopation. So I will insert the, uh, the ghost notes as taps. One and, and three, four, one, two, and, and one, two, three, and, and one, and, and two. One and, and three, and, and one, two, and, and four, and, and three, four, and, and three, and. Now let's swing it. One and. It just sounds like one of those rhythms, almost like Sammy Davis tap dancing or something, and I wanted to play the rims. Matter of fact, let's do a little rim solo, and I'm gonna play the hi-hat on beats two and four, which makes it sound like a jazz rhythm. Here we go, follow along. One, two, one, two, three, four. Right? Very jazzy. And what helps is the two and four on the hi-hat. Another thing you could do to bring it into the jazz world is even though I have a plastic beater on here, you might flip your, your beater your, on your DW pedal over to the felt side, and we're gonna use a technique called feathering. We're gonna play the bass drum softer. So if you're playing with like an upright bass player, you're just going to hear the point of the beat instead of If I was playing in a funk, country, or rock style, I would play more like that. But in a jazz style, I play heel down and I just feather the bass drum. So the foot batter I'm gonna play is this. Now, I couldn't resist. You heard me adding some little roughs and drags and things. So um, something you can do is whenever you see an upbeat, play this sticking. So you see an upbeat and you play that sticking. Tri it's a triplet. This is a triplet, right? So the sticking would be right, right, left. Right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left. And what it does is it gives it that little dancing, kind of tap dancing. You know, Buddy Rich was a tap dancer. He was such the world's greatest drummer because he started off as a tap dancer when he was a little boy, and he could play everything that his feet could play. So here's a little tap dancey solo, and I'm gonna incorporate this sticking whenever I see an upbeat. And I'm, you know, matter of fact, I'm gonna play a ping rim shot. There's a couple different kinds of rim shots. There's a cross stick rim shot. There's also a full rim shot that I use all the time when I play rock and funk, right? And a ping rim shot is where you go to the edge of the snare drum. You hear our friend Stanton Moore playing this a lot. It's kind of a New Orleanian style. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna play some ping rim shots and incorporate some of this triplet sticking, all right? First two lines, follow along. One, two, one, two, three, four. So already, we're just five minutes into this program. There's so many different ways you can practice these rhythms. Okay, so 
we incorporated the bass drum a little bit. How about we put the walking rhythm in there? What I mean by the walking rhythm is, is that on one and three, you have the kick drum. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. On the hi-hat, you have two and four. One, two, three, four. So you put it together and you get. Now, this is a pattern you want to have burned into your DNA, into your psyche, because if you want to play drums, this is, this is the basis of all popular music. The downbeats and the upbeats. This is where people clap their hands, OK? Um, so now we'll do this. I'm going to play the walking rhythm a little faster, and we're going to read those two lines again, swung and straight. So let's think of a good tempo here. Da ga ska da ga da ga da ga one, two, a one, two, three, four. Now let's swing it. OK? And uh, what else can we do? Well, I'm a big comp proponent of splashing the hi-hat hi symbol. And this is a technique that might take a little bit of a work. But basically, you'll hear somebody playing brushes, and they'll play a ching on the hi-hat which to me is a, a kind of a very transparent, kind of feminine sound. It's, it's real kind of sexy. What I like to do is I like to get the ball of my feet on the hi-hat and really get some leg in there. And I get a little bit more of a masculine sound out of that ching. So we call it a splash. So what I like to do is I'll put that splash on beats two and four, so one. So let's add your walking rhythm and you get, uh, here we go. All right, let's see what else we can do. I was kind of, um, kind of alluding to the fact that we can start adding the toms. So maybe what you do is any rhythm you could play on the snare drum or the hi-hat or the rims, you can also play on the toms. So let's use this um, two lines as a sort of a melody. So the top line you see, dot, 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 becomes a melody. I have my walking rhythm, and I'm going to start playing these figures on the tom-toms, and it's going to sound something like Gene Krupa's Sing, Sing, Sing. If you don't know what that is, it's one of the world's first drum solos. Gene Krupa was a household name. Housewives loved the guy. He was this handsome guy who played this beat that kind of went like this. So we can develop our own Gene Krupa-isms by taking this first line and applying it to the tom. So one, two, a one, two, three, boom. Maybe you set yourself up with some ground rules. Hey, on bars one and three of the phrase, I'll play the high tom. And on bars two and four, I'll play the low tom. So it's cool to play little games with yourself and set up some ground rules. Hey, maybe you can play a solo on the cymbals. Okay, we having fun? All right, good. Uh, let me check my notes here. Fill in the kick on the holes. So what we can do is, on all those ghost notes that I mentioned, da, ga, 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 we can add the kick drum in there. So it's a cool way to develop vocabulary that's kind of almost a conversation between the kick drum and snare drum. And I'll do, I'll do this slow. Jut, jut, and jut, jut, and jut, and you know what? I'm going to add some time on the hi-hat, too, and it'll sound a little bit maybe like a Coldplay song or um, kind of like a, an alt-rock song. Da, ka, boom, ka, ka, tu, ka, tu, ka, tu, ka, tu, du, ka, tu, ka, one, two, one, two, three. All right. 
So just imagine if, you know, we're, let me uh, play that a little bit louder and you can see like the practical application for it. And this time, I'm going to do what we call flat flams. And a flat flam, also known as a double stop, is basically I have two hands here. Instead of doing a traditional flam, I'm going to put one hand on another piece of the drum set. It could be a cymbal or it could be a floor tom. And I think this will sound really fat and gigantic if we put it on the low tom. So let's do this. A one, two, a one, two, a three, and... Okay, another thing we could do is basically just use the rhythm as a springboard for creating our own beats. So if we play this a little bit faster, do da do da do do da 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 do da da do da 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 It's cool to count, but sometimes you just want to sing it. Do da da do da do ba do ba do ba um da do bing bom ch ba do ba and. That was almost kind of like a, like a Bonham style. Another thing we could do is that we can, if we think of this as cut time, in other words, two large beats to the phrase. And when we talk about cut time, this is in 4-4 four, four time, right? Which means we have four beats to the bar. If we think it in cut time, then you want to think of it almost more like beats one and three are going by faster. And what I like to do is I like to put a backbeat. I'm a, I'm a backbeat guy. Everything in my world centers around a gigantic backbeat. That's how I hear things. And so what I do is I put a backbeat on beat three. And I'll put the majority of the rhythms in the kick drum. So we get like do 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 da do 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 da do 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 da do 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 ga do ga do 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 ga do 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 ga do 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 ga do 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 ga right. So it's almost like you're playing like a like a new metal song, like a disturbed kind of thing or something. So I'll demonstrate that for you guys right now. Oh, do, 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 ga, do, one, two, three. Okay, and obviously I'm just doing the first two lines for you guys, but you can do that for the entire page. All these concepts you can use not only for this page in the Ted Reed book, but you can use it for the entire book, okay? And I tell kids, hey, if you can't read the Ted Reed book cold from start to finish, you have your work to do. And why is reading so important? Well, reading is important because if you can read well, the world is your oyster. Any drum book, any DVD out there, you'd be able to read. And if you hear something on the radio or some other drummer playing it, you'd be able to write it out. So literally, the world is your oyster. Any rhythm that you hear, you can write out or you can interpret. That's very, very powerful. And for what I do, playing recording sessions, I might have to take a drum machine part. I might have to hear a drum machine part in the studio and the producer says, I really love this drum machine part and I want you to play it note for note, but I want you to play it as a human. I want you to have that little bit of a, a lilt and that imperfection that only a human can bring to the table. So I might have to write out what the drum machine does. Also on a recording session, I might, there might be a rhythmic figure in a piece of music and the producer and the band is like, oh, you know, that rhythm, that bop, do, bop, do, bop. Oh, bop, do, bop, do, bop. So, a bop, do, bop, do, bop, oh my God. That's that rhythm right there. That's uh, on the uh, sixth bar. One, two, and, and four. Bop, do, bop, do, bop. So, thanks to Ted Reed and my early drum teachers, I can write that rhythm out on a chart. A chart that I'm given by a producer or a chart that I create for myself. And I'm able to create quick charts because I can hear these rhythms in my head. There's only so many ways to write out uh, bop do bop do bop. Now I will show you guys bop do bop do bop because I wrote it as one, two, and, and, and four. Beat three is missing, right? It's a ghost note. What we have, uh, what Ted did, because, I call him Ted, uh, is he has a tie. <laughs> 
he has a tie. And whenever you see a tie, that means that whatever note is following the tie is either held or it disappears. So in drum notation, obviously, we can't hold a note unless we're rolling. So that just means that bop, do ba, do bop. It ends up being played like that. Okay, I hope that you guys understand that. I do recommend getting a qualified drum teacher that you can get with every single week because you know why? They will hold you accountable. You've got to put the time in because you don't want to go to a drum lesson unprepared. It's not a fun thing. <laughs> okay, let's look at some other things that you can do. We've talked about playing on the rims. We've talked about playing on the rim shots. We've talked about using these um, as a melody. How about we put the melody, the rhythm, on the tom-toms, and then we put a giant backbeat on beat three. So in cut time, we got Let's try that. One, two. Now, I used the walking rhythm there. I played the bass drum on one and three. What if we have a more kind of an explosive kick drum where we're driving. See how I incorporated some of those, some pea soup there and some hi-hat barking? That's a pretty cool technique. So everything is our oyster here on the drum set. How about we start um, playing time, and we'll break up the rhythm between the kick drum and snare drum. Maybe we can use a bossa nova pattern. So the key into playing a style like the bossa nova is not too heavy on the kick drum. Boom, 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 ba, boom. And you want to think of a shaker. And a triangle. Matter of fact, let's play the, let's incorporate the, the triangle sound. Okay, so make sure that you just lighten up on your touch on that style. Of course, we could play that same thing and go heavy on the kick drum. Same coordination idea, but it ends up sounding more like rock and roll. Now let's try this. Along the same lines, we'll put a backbeat on beats two and four, and we'll make this thing sound like the classic rock song, My Sharona. Have you heard of the one? Do do blah do do blah do blah do do blah do 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 blah do do blah ba 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 bon jabon. That is an awesome record. Very fun to play along with. So we'll do something in that spirit. Okay, we'll try this. I'm gonna put my right hand over on the floor tom, and I'm gonna play the written rhythm as a melody on my floor tom backbeat on two and four, and maybe I'll do some splashing here on the hi-hats and I'll do this. Let's do this. Now that's fun. So if you work through the entire book like that, you'll have some really cool facility. Another thing we could do is just very, very basic, is use an ostinato. So like in the hands on a rock beat, on a basic rock beat, what are you playing? Right, or? Yeah. 
So let's read the bass drum line. We'll read the top line, but we'll put it in the bass drum. A one, two, do, 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 a one, two, two, three. Actually, that kind of sounded like the cowboy part to um, Honky Tonk Women. So you can play these money beats, and that's kind of like a, a philosophy, a basic philosophy for my teaching style, is the money beats. And the money beats, I'm going to play two bars of each of these exercises, and I call them like boom, schmack, boom, schmack, boom, boom is the heartbeat, boom, schmack, boom, boom, schmack is our arena rock groove, boom, boom, schmack, boom, boom, schmack is our we will rock you groove, and then everyone's favorite four on the floor, do, ba, do. Bah. So I'm going to run two bars of these, each of these uh, money beats for you, and then use those, and I'm going to play the top line as a cowbell part in the spirit of Honky Tonk Women. But first, the money beats. Here we go. Two bars each. Oh, one, two, three. Even on my cross stick, I heard one time that I wasn't as consistent as I wanted to be. But this is a technique I use a lot in Nashville, right? Or if you're playing like a a Brian's uh, a Brian Adams song. Or the police. But in Nashville, you really have to have a consistent cross stick sound. Okay? So take any of these money beats that I was talking about, and we're going to play the, the cowbell part in the spirit of honky-tonk women over on the bell of the ride. All right? And we'll use money beat number one. A one, two, three. Oh, my God, that is muscle memory. I'm going to use, do one and three on the kick drum. Sorry, guys. Here we go. A one, two, three. Just so natural to go. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground in 30 minutes. Do you get the spirit of this? You could take any drum book. I just happened to pick Ted Reed Syncopation, one of the most famous books of all time. And you could just use your own creativity. You can use each bar as a melody. What if I just wanted to take bar number one? Da 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 done. How many things can I do with that rhythm? Well, if you heard this beat, you've heard this a million times. And three, four, one. Or if you count it in half time, a one E, a two, and three E, a four, and one E, a two, and you're playing indie rock, right? So here you go, that using that one rhythm. So take all these rhythms and use them as melodies. If you play it straight and you could swing it, you could do it in half time, you could do it in double time. You're working on your strokes, you're working on your taps, you're working on using the creativity on the drum set and the colors on the drum set. Of course, to lock it in even more solid, practice with a metronome. And then apply these concepts on your next recording session, your next gig, or your next band rehearsal. Thanks for tuning in, we'll see you next time.